up, what up? Wimbush here, and I'm gonna show you how to finish out what we went over in the last video on how to composite this glue ball here. So if you missed the first episode, basically I went over everything in Cinema 4D and After Effects and JS placement, how to build everything here. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to composite everything. So I'm gonna come over to my project window, hit Control I, and look for my project file here. Captures, organic ball, my pre-renders. Then I'm gonna look for my AEC file. Boom. So whenever you export out of Cinema 4D, when you do the AEC file, it gives you all these files here to work with and it brings them all organized. So I have my it actually makes a composition here for you as well, but let me delete these so we can start it from scratch. So I'm gonna bring in my main layer. And if I scrub through, you can see it playing there. And then I have my puzzle mat, which let me bring that underneath and solo it. This time it's blue on red. This is a render I did previously. I know in the last video it was green, but for my um, output I did earlier was blue and red, but it doesn't matter, it does the same thing. So I'm gonna come down to my main layer and then come over to my effects and presets and just type in set and we're gonna do a set map. Now I went over this in detail on another video, so make sure you check that out. But I mean, it's pretty simple. I made a set map, come over here to take map from layer. I'm gonna go to my puzzle mat, I'm gonna select the red and it's going to cut out on my red channel there which is on my dots so i'm just gonna i'm gonna make this red here so i know that this is the red the red layer i'm gonna hit Control d duplicate it and then same thing just go over to here and pick the blue channel so now i have my ball i'm gonna make this blue so i know that one's the blue one drag it underneath now let's add some levels to it Go to my histogram, move it to the right a little bit, and drag up to the left just a tad bit. There we go. Should be good at that point. And then same thing with the ball. I don't think it's really going to do too much, but let's drag it up so the whites really pop through. And if we want to add a background so we can make it look like it's in space, I actually looked up this image. It's a star map. 8K, you should be able to find it free on Google. But again, I'll put my project file up on Gumroad so you guys can have all the files there. Basically, it's just an 8K star map. Let me shrink this down a tad bit. Then I'm gonna right click down here. I'm just gonna add a black solid in the background so that I can go to my star map. Just knock down the transparency just a little bit just like that then actually since i have my camera exported from cinema 4d i can have the space track in time with it so if i go down to my star map click left click here where it makes it a 3d layer then let me pull open my my position on my camera so it's at zero zero negative 1700 so I'm gonna bring my star map position. I'm just gonna make it all zeroed out since I know it's all zeroed out on my camera. And then where it says one view, I'm gonna click two views horizontal so I can get an overhead view of exactly what's going on. So here's my camera right here. And then where you see the X, Y, Z, that's actually my star map. So I'm gonna move it back a tad bit until I see a full frame in my active camera on the right. Then let me make this full screen again. So if I'm scrubbing through, it actually makes the background, just gives it that little bit of movement. It kind of gives that parallax move there. So just subtle stuff like that makes a difference. So now I'm gonna continue with the composition of our blob here. Let me get out to reflections, bring this down. You can see some of the highlights from the reflection map. I want to bring levels over here a little bit, make this pop just a tad bit more. 
but we don't want to get too high. And then down here, if I click on my reflection layer under mode, you can screen it out. And then we just have our highlights there. See if I click that off. Just makes a subtle difference, nothing too crazy. But so if I go over to my emissions, now I'm gonna bring that on top of there. And you can see that's all of our dots there. I'm just gonna add levels to it, brighten it up a tad bit. And then I'm gonna go into my effects and presets, type in glow. And I like using this VR glow. Sometimes I get pretty good results from it. If I bring down my Luma threshold, we can start seeing, let me zoom in here a little bit. I mean, it just adds a subtle bit of glow to it. Let me add up my brightness. Now you can really see it starting to pop there. Make my glow radius a little bit smaller. So now we can see Add some glow there. Maybe make the radius a little bit taller or bigger. Sorry. Then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna screen that out. So we have a little bit of glow there. And then if I want to add almost like an atmospheric glow just around the entire thing, we can come up here and go to the ellipse tool. And then I'm gonna click on the center. To start to drag out but you can see it's dragging out off to the side that's because if we hold down control then it's gonna it's gonna make it even when you drag out then if i hold shift it makes it a perfect circle so we want to drag it just a little bit inside here oops that actually made it a mask so what i want to do is i want to make sure i'm not clicked on anything none of my layers because it made a, it made a mask there so let me click outside. Now let me try that again. Bring it directly into the middle. Hold control, shift, bring it out. Makes a circle. But as you notice in our shape layer, nothing showing up there. That's because I didn't add a stroke. So let's add like a two point stroke. It's already white. Now let's bring it up so you can really see it. So let's say about 18. Now I'm just going to throw like a fast blur over top of this. So let's blur it out. Now it's starting to get that atmospheric effect. Come down here to our mode, maybe add it. So now it's really hanging off in there. We can shrink this down. I'm going to hit S, scale it down just a tad bit. So it's just to add a little bit of atmospheric glow. Now, if you notice, whenever I scrub through my timeline, it's not a 3D layer, so it's gonna not be moving with the camera, but that's an easy fix because whenever I export it, that's one thing I didn't go over, but I put a compositing tag onto my sphere so that whenever I rendered it out, it put this tag here. So if I look at my position, it's all zeroed out. So that means for my shape layer, Make this a 3D layer and zero it all out. And then I just have to hit S for scale, bring it back down. And now when I scroll through my timeline, it's gonna track with the um a glove ball there, whatever you want to call it, globby ball, organic ball. And then um let's add a little lens flare to there. Oops, I don't want to do that. So used to hitting control s but i'm going to add an adjustment layer so go up to layer new adjustment layer let me just type in flare and i have optical flares but we'll just use a generic lens flare just because some people might not have optical flares so we just use something generic here bring down the brightness then if you don't like that color like that, you can always just go to like hue and saturation, type in hue, hue and saturation pops up. Then we can make it any color that we want. If you just drag the master wheel, you can change the colors there. And this is, when they, if you have optical flares, you have much more control of all this stuff, but let me get a fast blur, just blur it out a little bit. 
hit repeat edges so we don't get that and there's a shrink there I guess that's not gonna work it's blurring out everything that's because I have it on the adjustment layer that's all right let's bring it down actually instead of hue and saturation let's try tritone see if we can get it all one color there we go make it like a bluish and like I said so it's on the adjustment layer it's affecting everything but we could just blend with the original, bring in some of our original color in there a little bit. Cool, it's not looking bad. Let's add a vignette. I'm gonna name this layer Flare. All right, so go up to layer, adjustment layer. And name this one Vin for vignette. So go to my presets, just type in VIG. And we'll get a vignette here and that just the vignette just kind of darkens up the edges so if i click off click on you can kind of see the edges right here getting brighter and darker so whenever you darken up the edges it kind of brings a focal point to the middle there let me see if i bring them on up to 200 there you go so that's looking good there and then for the dust, I added just like dust particulates in the atmosphere. So what I used was particular, or you could use stock footage, whatever you have at your disposal. But let me show you what I did for a particular. It's real easy. I'll go up to my layer, make a new layer, make a black solid. It's so right here, just make a black solid. Then go to my effects layer, type in particular. And this is a red giant plugin. And they made it really easy you just hit effects builder and over on the left hand side here we have a ton of presets so we actually have one here called moon dust that's a pretty good starting point so if i click on the moon gravity and just change it to like something small like four now you can see it's kind of like all looking like it's just floating the free space so i hit apply and then down here in my emission extra we want to pre-run it Maybe let's say like 50 so we already have particles in the scene let me solo this out so you can kind of see what's going on oh yeah in our position here we're going to want to cat or want to want to copy our camera position so if i come down in here to my rs camera hit p remember we're at zero zero negative 1700 so i'm going to copy my z space right here at negative 1700 Go back over here and then our position X, Y, that was zero, zero. And then in our position Z, I'm gonna paste in our negative 1700. And there we go. We have a stars all around us. We can kind of pull back a tad bit. And now we're seeing all of our stars here. Come over to particle. I like using the glow sphere, even though it has no depth of field, but it gives it that nice little glow around the stars. They don't need to be that big. Let's hit size one, randomize 100, and opacity random, just bring it up 100. Then I'm gonna unsolo it, and there we go. So whenever we play it through, you'll have the, the floating, little floating dust you can see there. It's coming on and off. And in the high res version, I'll post on YouTube, you'll see it even more. But yeah, that's basically how I built that out. And then you can always add like a magic bullet looks if you really want to make everything integrated. So make another adjustment layer. And this is if you have magic bullet looks. Type in looks. Do an edit. And then they have so many presets. You don't really have to mess around with it too much. So we could do like pulse of three way. Tone mapping looks pretty cool. Let me bring that in. Yeah, so it just added that little bit of punch in there. Let me bring my flare down just a tad bit. There you go, bring some of the original color in. But yeah, I mean, you know, just have fun with it. Just add stuff to your scene. Add what you want, sound effects, all that good stuff. And that's basically how I put that scene together. So if you guys enjoyed this, definitely leave me a comment. There's more videos to come, so make sure you subscribe. 
leave a thumbs up and please share this channel with everybody i've been loving the support so far if there's anything you guys want to see me do a tutorial on just hit me up and i'll try to make it happen for you until then stay creative and yeah peace out